Hi, hopefully we're going out live on Facebook and LinkedIn now. Small little technical issue to start this morning with the uh, live stream. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be live without some kind of problem like that. I'm Laura Finity. I'm the multimedia content manager at AdRoll. Um, we do these live streams every uh, two weeks now. We've been weekly, we're going bi-weekly at the moment. We bring a whole range of conversation with marketers, um, founders, CEOs of direct-to-consumer companies to try and bring some insights some advice and um, some ideas perhaps that you can use and implement on your own uh, business strategies and your own marketing campaigns. Coming up today, we're going to be chatting with Caitlin Watson, who is the VP of Marketing at Nurex. So um, Nurex is all about uh, providing telecare and online medicine. So we're going to talk a little bit about their 200,000 plus customers and community and how they use um, open access to physicians and prescriptions to send a message of female empowerment. I'm really excited to chat with Caitlin today because I think in terms of, of products, we've not really covered anything like this before. And it's such an exciting future um, for medicine. I think that we're going to see more and more of. Uh, a little bit about Caitlin herself. Um, she's a um, has spent nearly 20 years in consumer marketing for agencies and big brands, early stage companies as well. And her sweet spot is for product products and services that are building a new market, which absolutely makes sense why Neurex would be where she has found herself. So that's a little bit about her. Uh, before we get into um, an introduction with Caitlin, I just wanted to promote that we have a new ebook that is out. It's called Diving Into Digital, and um, it's bringing the offline brands online. So this is absolutely uh, an ebook for people who are all different stages of getting online, taking their, um, their brand online. And there's a whole host of information, as you can see here, just this slide. It uh, gives you kind of like this, some overviews of the different e-commerce platforms that you might want to be looking at if you're brand new to it all. Um, but in general, throughout the whole of the ebook, um, you'll see uh, different the differences between in-person and e-commerce customers, how to build an ideal customer profile or an ICP to find the right customers, putting together online acquisition plans with paid and unpaid strategies, and um, making sure basically that you get your products into the hands of your customers. So I'm going to share that link for the ebook so that you can check it out, you can download it, um, and hopefully that will be of some use to you. All right, uh, let's get into today's guest. I've got a little um, intro video for Neurex so that you can get an idea of what type of service and products they provide. Would you like me to make some birth control recommendations for you? What if you could get prescribed birth control? on your schedule. Nurex simplifies the system with unlimited access to your medical team, no hassle or waiting at pharmacies, and birth control delivered every month to your door for one affordable price with or without insurance. And less interruptions to your daily life. Get birth control on your own terms. Go to Nurex.com to get started. There we go. There's a little bit of an introduction to Nurex and I want to welcome Caitlin this morning to live stream. Hi. Hi there, thanks for having me. It's funny to see that. That was actually our first TV spot that we ever did. So it was a little yeah. for a moment. A little blast from the past. I mean, I say that I, when I was looking, uh, you know, for just some, some of the video content you guys have out there, that's from 2019, which feels like a lifetime ago. Right. <laughs> it's only last year, but like so much has changed. So true. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself then. I, I kind of gave a, a brief intro there, but um, yeah, give us a bit more information about about uh, some of the kind of work you've done and how you got into marketing and, and your love for working with products like, like Neurex provide that are new in the market. Yeah, sure. So I started on the agency side very early in my career, and this was very early in digital. So I kind of grew up in digital and performance marketing and measuring everything. And um, actually went to went to college and my first few roles were in Texas and um, not to be stereotypical but we were a little behind Silicon Valley as it relates to technology um, and I was kind of you know at that time um, people were like what is this digital marketing what are you doing and, you know this is the early 2000s LinkedIn was new um, but I quite frequently would travel to the Bay Area and work with you know, Google and our media partners and was just like, this is where I want to be. 
Um, so early on at agencies was really working with big brands to help them figure out, you know, what is digital? How do we bring it into our mix? How do I help you and empower you as a marketer within your organization to start taking money from direct mail and TV and, um, you know, some of these older, more traditional marketing um, avenues. And that's really how I grew up. I mean, like grew up in Google um, in the very early days. So um, made that transition from uh, agency to brand, actually went to La Quinta in Texas. And, um, you know, this is a 50 year old brand, like the hotel where my grandparents stayed. And they had a lot of hurdles around, you um, you know, what uh, what the hotel of your grandparents was versus what the new rebuilds and, and rebrands were going to be. So I was there during that transition, learned a ton about brand, was able to expand channels significantly, but wanted to do that for a more technology focused company. And fast forward, that's what brought me to Bay Area um, was that Shutterfly and really helped them expand out of just, you know, how do you get photos out of your out of your camera at the time um, or, or your phone, all the way to inventing photo books and everything that Shutterfly has really been known for, um, but was really frustrated with uh, you know, silos and marketing sometimes quite often being left out of the equation as it relates to PR, to partnerships, to other areas of marketing that quite frequently are very integrated with, with performance marketing, but are like on the sidelines. And so that's when I said, I want to go to startups a little bit earlier stage. I can own it all. I can see the big picture. Um, and that's really what happened. And fast forward to today, um, continuing to focus on companies who are at that, that very like, how do I start stepping on the gas for growth? Um, product market fit is there and use all of that foundation from digital marketing even in the early 2000s to drive what what we do today it's 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 crazy though because when you think you know i mean uh, i always feel like that like millennium was only like you know maybe 10 years right. ago actually like you know we're now in 20 like 2020 um but that the just the change is incredible really i mean as a job as as a whole kind of roller coaster of the different tools the different ways and just learning about how to you know how to engage with customers and everything online in that time is just wild yeah. really it's like a different world you know the funny thing about it is that we are still having a lot of the same conversations like i was talking about last click and google 20 years ago <laughs> so so while we are much farther than than where we were and we have lots of tools and um you know much broader base of of just understanding, we are still having a lot of the same conversations, believe it or not. Some things never change, that's, <laughs> that's totally true. Um, so what about Neurexen? Tell us a little bit about um, the products and service. Um, obviously there was a, a little bit of an overview with the intro video there, but um, tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, I think the, uh, the the intro, the TV spot, you know, was specific around birth control, but we really are a telemedicine platform that's focused on helping people with sensitive issues that they might have related to their health care. Um, we are not a wellness company. We are a healthcare company in that we have uh, providers who work on our platforms, who are doctors, nurses, et cetera, who work directly with our patients. Um, they go through the same process that you would in a traditional brick and mortar doctor's office. Um, we also pr process insurance. So um, you don't have to worry about, you know, not being able to use your insurance with Nurex. We process that as well. And then we own and operate our own pharmacy. So we have pharmacists on staff. We have the inventory for over 100 different types of birth control, but also other services, including herpes treatment, STI testing and treatment, prep for HIV, uh, and many more to come, which is which is really exciting. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it feels like it makes complete sense, you know, to have that um, online access for people to be able to have things come directly to the door. I mean, again, like imagining this, you know, maybe 10 years ago, you just think it wouldn't be possible because of all of the kind of red tape around uh, providing medical services and having that, that relationship with a doctor. But obviously, as you say, you do have the physicians that have that ask the questions, ensure that like everything matches with the patient's needs. So there's no, you know, concerns over that aspect. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the space is, the space is interesting. Like we've kind of skyrocketed forward, you know, 15, maybe even 20 years with COVID and the acceptance of telemedicine in general. Um, mm -hmm. But the differences between what's out there are, are pretty broad in terms of 
you know, some companies will only take cash. Like people don't want to deal with our insurance companies anymore. So if you have a really low cost cash option, that's that's a good option as well. But it doesn't necessarily support um, those who are in need, those who might not be able to even afford a five or ten dollar um, prescription. Uh, you know, there are other companies that will do bits and pieces of telemedicine, like maybe they do the prescription or the doctor consult, but then they don't do the pharmacy. Then there's companies that only do the pharmacy. So we really and truly are kind of all in one uh, from start to finish. And um, we've decided to focus on, you know, to not focus on uh, primary care, ear infections, sore throat, um, because we we see, and I've worked at, like I said, I've worked at companies like Shutterfly. I worked at If Only, which was a marketplace for experiences. Companies with products that people were super passionate and super vocal about. I have never seen more engaged customers uh, than I than I do at Nurex. And a lot of that comes from you are going to trust the person that you talk to your like talk about your STI test with so much more than. Uh, you know, just going in for a quick checkup or doing a telemedicine checkup. And so we find that um, our patients are very engaged, very highly likely to stay with us. 90% of them say that they would use us for any service that we launched. And we're also learning that people don't want to use, uh, now that telemedicine is like kind of, a, it's a thing, right? Everyone, Everyone's doing it. Um, they don't want to use multiple services. So you don't want to have an account here and an account there and like jump all over the place. Um, you know, and ideally you want your profile sort of all in one place. And so that's really why we've expanded services so broadly and um, are just accelerating that even more given COVID. But there's a certain level of quality that you need uh, with any new service. Uh, and the things that we're adding, because this is this is healthcare and not wellness, um, not just e-commerce for that matter, uh, they do take quite some time. So we should have a, a couple more out before the rest of the year. So stay tuned for that. And I mean, speaking, you mentioned there, obviously you have high engagement with your customers. Your customers are really willing to um, advocate for the brand. They're willing to talk about their experience, which I could imagine potentially somebody talking about, you know, something like birth control. Some people may perhaps aren't, uh, you know, particularly interested in, sh in broadcasting or sharing their inf like that, that information with, um, with other, you know, whether it's their like followers on something like Instagram or Twitter, but you do have really uh, passionate, you know, customers that are, are very much advocating for the product. Like, was that pretty natural, or did you have to try and engage them into these types of conversations to 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 get that advocacy? Uh, it's a little bit of both. So, I think just naturally, when you give someone a better way to do something at a lower cost um, and something that people are very passionate about, they will talk about you. Um, but we also give people other opportunities and reasons to talk about Nurex, and we've primarily focused on education. So we have not only a house, what we call the house call, which is our blog, we also have a resource center that will give you information about any particular um, drug or test or anything, any kind of specific question. Um, and we've also just chosen to... Um, you know, educate people on things that are related to their healthcare, even outside of Nurex. So one thing that we saw, and, and we, we've amplified this during the pandemic, um, is early on with COVID, uh, people didn't know where to go. Like, what headline do I read? What doctor do I listen to? Do I listen to the president? Do I not? Like, so many questions. People wanted to hear from us. And so we saw that actually this was, it seems so long ago, like you said, um, but you know, early on we we're like, should we, should we have a doctor do a post about COVID and what the precautions are and what it is? And we did, and it was our number one, um, you know, most read article. And so we said, you know, people are just starving for information and information that they trust that is not from the news. Um, and, and so that's where we focused really, really heavily. And, um, given our provider's perspective, also not just the perspective of Nurex and Nurex marketing department and our brand, but our, our doctor's perspective. And that's really core to the brand is bringing our providers and our doctors to the forefront, uh, to help educate people. And then when they feel smarter, when they feel smarter about a certain drug type or legislation or law or whatever's happening in the world, then they do talk about it because it makes them sound smart. 
and just sharing that information, right? Like you say, once you realize you've got a process or something that you could just like, it's much easier than why not tell all your friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that of course with COVID, like I imagine you guys have seen a surge in signups perhaps since the start of this year with COVID or is it, um, you know, have you found that people are looking, you know, obviously they don't want to go to doctor's office, they don't want to expose themselves to anywhere perhaps near healthcare providers if they don't have to. Have you seen you've had more kind of inbound customers because of that? It's been incredible. The growth has really been incredible. And we, you know, we wouldn't have expected this. Um, there's also kind of been the, you know, it's, it's, it's bittersweet to say this, but there's been a bit of a perfect storm of things that have happened related that um, have, have helped us grow. So um, media costs, like so many industries are just pulling out of spending on media, in particular TV. However, at the same time, there are more impressions available than there ever were before because people are sitting at home in front of their TV. So that, you know, that's kind of a win-win. Then all the pharmacies closed and then reopened and then closed again. Then we had, um, you know, all the protests and things happening with, with Black Lives Matter, which had an interesting effect also on the retail industry because many stores, especially in large cities, were closing. And so you have you have all of that, you put that together, and then what, what's most recently been happening with, with Facebook bans and things of that nature. And, um, you know, you have a, a customer and an audience who's much more engaged than they ever were before. Media costs, um, so that, you know, driving better conversion. Media costs that are lower than they've ever been before, lowering CAC. Um, and just the brick and mortar spaces are, are shutting down. So kind of all of these things were happening for us at the same time and, and across telemedicine in general, this is not, you know, just Nurex specifically um, that have, have really helped us grow. So I think you mentioned 200,000, we're nearing 300,000 just for birth control now, but all of our services, you know, emergency contraception, STI testing and treatment, herpes, the list goes on, 100% growth um, from the start of the pandemic. So. Yeah, it continues. And a lot of that is simply the attitudes have changed. Mm -hmm. You know, people who were on the fence or who thought like, I don't know, you know, is talking to a doctor online weird? Yeah, that that is like pretty much gone. And I think for people who tried it during the pandemic, um, which is another thing that we're hearing, especially from many of our providers who also operate in brick and mortar clinics, um, they're trying to get their patients to come back and they don't want to. So, yeah. The yeah. whole trend, I mean, it's like the biggest experiment, right, that you could possibly, right. an extreme experiment to throw everybody into, but yeah. the way in which, you know, for some, for many people, it's just going to change the way in which they operate uh, yeah. you know, from here on out, because it just, just won't be the kind of same again. And once you've had that experience, yeah. you know, I go back. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, telemedicine is never meant to replace a physical exam. That, that was never the point. If and when you need a physical exam, you should make an appointment with your doctor. Um, but the, you know, many of the things that, that we go in for are just not necessary. And so people have known that for a long time. It's just been a little bit more of a forced shift. And I guess also your, I imagine your demographic is pretty broad. I mean, you're very much feature, um, focused on female uh, demographic to start with, especially with, you know, your first um, offering was with birth control. Um, and I know that has somewhat changed as, as your uh, you're kind of providing different products, but it's the demographic, I mean, age-wise, I'm assuming it starts from, you know, quite young, like college right the way through to to kind of like older older um, demographics as well. It is, it's, it's primarily 25 to 35 is really the sweet spot, uh, women in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, even for PrEP, we have, we, we believe we have the largest percentage of, of women of female PrEP patients. Yeah. Um, part of that is because women are just not talked to about PrEP, yet there many of them are, are still at risk. And, um, you know, things that are sexually transmitted are not like they don't discriminate. Like if, if you're concerned about one thing, you probably sh could be concerned about another thing. So um, so primarily women, we, we are very female focused. Um, however, we really focus, and, and you will see more of this in 2021 as we expand service lines that are more, um, you know, less gender specific. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be um, still very, very female focused and targeting women, but we will not be leaving men out of the conversation. Uh, let's just say that. 
it's like a teaser. Yeah. Some people coming. I know that I catch, I, you know, just doing, I mean, as you say, doing research. And I thought, like, I've heard of PrEP, but I actually have never really heard about it. Talks about in a female, from a female perspective, it's often from the male perspective. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. or, and um, and so I actually had to Google. I was like, is this for both gender? Like, is it, is it both sexes? Like, I have no, I, you know, I really didn't know. So it's interesting that that, in terms of, like you say, bringing that into a more female-based conversation so that there's that, you know, awareness and, and understanding that it's also something that can be taken. Um, yeah. by as so well. There's a lot of stigma around it. Um, you know, the bigger companies, the pharma companies in particular, um, it, it is hard for them to focus on women when they could go after more like marginalized populations or, um, you know, the white gay male, you know, it's like very easy to target. Um, so it's, it's very easy to go after those populations. But I think what we've, what we've certainly focused on is how do we go beyond that and expand? Um, and we are certainly not finished, um, but we are making a bit of a dent. And so that's pretty exciting. And, and then you'll see, um, actually, if you look at our TV spots, our most recent one that was for herpes treatment, herpes testing and treatment, um, you know, one in two people uh, have some form of herpes, which is crazy. I didn't know that. Um, but we, we did expand even in that spot. Um, and we, we have a, a man in that spot as well. And have you found, you know, you mentioned with the TV adverts, like, is that something that obviously you've put more focus on with the changes in the pandemic and, and just having that those media spots available and, and perhaps being more competitively priced than it would have been? Are there any other, um, any other kind of um, channels that you've used that you perhaps are testing that you've found have been pretty, shown some interesting results? You know, acquisition cost for everything has gone down across the board, but I would say TV still was the most opportunistic, just mm -hmm. given the sheer amount of, um, you know, linear, but also digital impressions that, that are out there while prices were also dropping. I mean, travel and retail and uh, many of these entire industries who were kind of pulling out of their TV deals um, and still, you know, aren't like they're still not back um, are, I think retail is coming back, you know, slowly, but surely. And by Q4, we will see that going into the gifting season, but, but, but we still certainly took advantage of that. And we'd never done a TV ad for a service line other than um, birth control. And so for us, that was our opportunity to say, you know, we, we probably wouldn't have invested in this for other services uh, had the market not been so perfect. Um, and we certainly saw the response there. And so now we're just really hoping that that will continue and that this is a shift as well um, towards digital TV, where there's, again, just so many more impressions and impressions in, of different types uh, available that, that we can go after. I also just want to say, I know that uh, we are live at the moment, so I've seen Krishna just kind of giving us a wave. If you are watching and you have any questions, like absolutely, you can write them in the chat box on um, Facebook or LinkedIn, and we can um, get those answered. So do like, feel free to ask any questions if you if you have any. Um, so, uh, you know, looking at the, you mentioned, obviously we're seeing more tally health and, and kind of looking at online health in general for the future. What are your predictions of how this is going to progress and what type of, of growth we're going to see in this sector? Lots of competitors for us. <laughs> so, so it is actually a good, a, an interesting thing to think about in the future when, um, you know, all of the large health systems and health and wellness companies, pharmacy companies, et cetera, big box retailers, like as the list goes on, that will be trying to figure out how do we service people for their healthcare needs. Um, so, so you'll see not only just, you know, smaller startup competitors coming into play, but I think like every company, I mean, Amazon, we, we've all seen this, um, will, will just, there will just be a lot more of them. So that really leads to us of you know how do we think about creating the most inclusive brand that people are super loyal to um where you know no matter what service we launch if they trust nurex for one thing they will trust us for something else 
Um, so that's what we're very focused on. And that, that again, comes from um, what I mentioned earlier, like content is, has never been more important. And, and not just content, but content that's interesting and engaging and shareable and comes from a super trusted source. Like it can't just be, again, content that your marketing or SEO team wrote. It really needs to come from a trusted source. And so um, that's really what we're focusing on for the future. I also wanted to highlight that we see, um, you know, as I'd mentioned a little bit with the introduction, like, of course, New York's also is about female empowerment. It's about giving people options of choice and access um, for healthcare. And of course, like I just pulled this tweet from from the account for um, talking about the um, the Supreme Court's uh, recent kind of decision to um, basically you know, uh, that, that employers can make decisions based upon like religious decisions of whether they want to um, allow access for um, for birth control and things like that to their employees. And uh, obviously you guys have been vocal about this. This is very much like your customer, your community, and you wanna make sure that everybody gets access to what they need. Um, so I just kind of wanted to highlight that. And then and then also that you have the um, your ex gives back. So you tell me a little bit about, about what this is all about and uh, um, and how this came to be. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of those perfect examples where this this happened and we all looked at each other and said, what can we do? Um, we felt a bit helpless, um, but we said, this is an education moment. Some of our patients don't even know what happened, right? They're reading headlines. They don't know what it means. How do we educate them on what this decision even is? And then they can make their own sort of judgment around how they want to support it. Um, but also take it a step further to give them, um, you know, actions that they could specifically take. So we had this idea around what if we, you know, this is all, this is all about giving employers the right to limit your access to healthcare, um, which I could talk about this topic for hours. So I'll try to, I'll try, I'll try to keep it short. Um, so we said, well, we need a we need a way to make it easier for people to go to their employer who you know might be losing their coverage and just tell them how this is affecting their lives and how you know it's really important for them to um, to be to really not support this decision. And um, by the way, this is this is a ruling that gives companies the power to make this change, but they don't have to. Like they can choose to keep things the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really what we wanted to do was educate people and that you you can just go to your employer and tell them like, please don't change anything. This will be really painful for me. Um, so we wrote that letter so that they could simply copy and paste that um, to their own employer. Um, you know, telling people to vote some of the things that, that seem kind of obvious, but really giving them almost a bit of a checklist uh, for what they could do. And uh, we got a, a ton of feedback that people were so grateful for that and that they were concerned about losing their coverage. And, you know, we, we as a brand, we really try not to get too involved in politics because we want our patients to sort of, it, it's core to our brand, which is educating patients on what is out there, what solutions could be right for them, and then letting them them choose, is it A or B? Right. And so we want to really just going back to that education, um, put that, you know, at the forefront. And that's what we did with this most recent decision. And, um, you know, looking at we, we had, first of all, huge uptick in business, lots of social comments and appreciation. Um, but just from educating people, they were like, yeah, why should anyone tell me what I can or cannot have for my body? Um, you know, family planning is number like one of the number one ways that women can accelerate their career is simply by planning when and if they want to have a child and how they want to accelerate their career. So, you know, those kinds of decisions just really limit those opportunities for women. Um, and again, that's just it's just all in education and getting people to kind of stand up for themselves. That's what that was about. I feel like also, I mean, often it's it's minorities as well who are most um, affected by these changes sometimes as well. And and so in terms of just like looking online, reading how everything really is involved as also with the Black Lives Matter movement, like all of this plays in together, it really does. And it, it's usually like, you know, statistically it'll be like black women 
or minority groups that are, are really affected by these changes even more so than other you know kind of demographics of women so um it's it's kind of interesting depressing and uh kind of infuriating to read a little bit about how you say people can make these decisions for you know basically for other people and i really would um urge that if anybody's interested to read more i know that obviously um you know you're you're uh, within your company you have speakers who are over you know, uh, giving opinions and getting involved in conversations elsewhere, not just within the company, but with other um, other kind of uh, companies and, and different um, par partnerships in that sense. But also uh, just checking out this article, the, the five actions that you can take, you'll find um, basically like a, a, a template there for the email that you can send to your employees so that you can just switch out your name if you don't really know how to start that conversation. Uh, there's a great template there, but there's also just other advice on how you could take some action or how you could, you know, share your voice and opinion on the matter um, because I'm sure, you know, obviously it makes a difference. So do check that out. I'll share the link um, for all of that inside the, the comments and stuff and, um, and all of those posts and links so that you can see whereabouts they're at and uh, and have a read there. Um, I'll just add, we did that in like a day. I mean, we just, we, I, I feel like as a brand, if you um, really put your focus in one area, like I said, for us, it's really education and empowerment, mm -hmm. then you can, you can essentially come up with solutions much faster because you know exactly where your lane is and what you're trying to do. Um, so it's more important, I think, than ever for us as brands to figure out how do we do some of these even revolutionary things in a fraction of the time that we would have done them in before, um, including, you know, filming TV ads during filter in place and things like that. So um, something to think about. Yeah, the agility aspect. I mean, I, I know, you know, obviously one of the huge benefits for any direct consumer company often is like a that direct conversation you can have with your customer and then also the agility to be able to kind of make decisions make changes and and try and turn things around as quick as possible to yeah. have a bigger impact so that's always something that if you can if you can get it done and do it quickly then it's just it's amazing to see like how much momentum and growth that can that can bring um, well, before I let you go here this morning, I just want to ask if, in terms of uh, a couple of questions, if um, if you knew 2020 was was going to be coming, <laughs> and this was uh, all the stuff that's happened would uh, was that's happened this year would happen, um, what would you have done differently, or what advice would you give um, to companies that are kind of uh, perhaps new and entering the market at this kind of wild and crazy time? Yeah, I think one simple and practical thing is that we we would have had a lot more assets than we did. Um, so we did have to kind of scramble to take opportunity of, of TV and figure out how to get a lot more assets. Um, so that would have been something that if we had the foresight, we maybe would have, we would have had 20 different TV spots that we could have tested. Uh, also, maybe we would have invested in other areas of the team uh, around brand and testing new channels because we are seeing that efficiency across the board. Um, but it's taking you know a little bit longer to bring people on board and get them up to speed. Uh, so kind of thinking about those investment areas on your team and hiring for that. And if you can't hire for that, how do you take someone that's existing on the team and maybe let them dip their toe in the water on some of these things so that um, when and if the time is right, that your team can really hit the ground running. Like those are two very marketing specific areas. Uh, I think on the other side, we, you know, we would have had more services that we can offer our patients because more, you know, more than ever, they're just asking us for more, and those things take time to develop. Um, and then even just like a broader operational staff to support the kind of what if scenarios around growth. So we've. We've certainly had to step it up to make sure that we're serving people in the time frame that they would expect. Um, although there, you know, the the good thing is people expect there are delays all around, but really just kind of planning for that a little more because what we could have done was just said, "Oh, we're ready for this." You know, we're just moving it forward six months. Um, mm -hmm. But we really have been kind of building while things were happening, and I think everyone has. So, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. 
Yeah, there was no predicting really, um, but it's it's great to hear that you know guys obviously have seen a huge amount of growth, continued growth as well, you know, with customers as well as of course product and just services. So super excited to see how things progress with you guys in the future, and you know hopefully catch up again with you in the future um, at another stage to see how things are moving. Great, yeah, and happy to answer any questions if there were any. Um, if not, feel free to reach out to me on social or LinkedIn or anywhere else you can find me. Perfect. I'll share them. I'll share a link to your LinkedIn in the uh, chat as well, so people can, um, you know, kind of click on that and and have a chat with you there. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Really appreciate you uh, joining the live stream. And thanks so much. All right. Bye. Okay, that's Caitlin Watson, who is the VP of Marketing at Nurex. Um, a huge thank you to her for joining us today and chatting a little bit about their customer, their products, and um, and you know some future predictions for telehealth and um, online medicine for the future. Uh, next week we have, uh, will be not sorry, I say next week. That's force of habit. We are biweekly now, so on the fifth of August. We are going to be joined by uh, Captain Lee. Now, this is somebody who is, if you are a, a Below Deck fan, this is a, actually a reality TV show on Bravo. Uh, my boss is a huge fan. Um, so <laughs> uh, he's going to be joining us uh, to talk a little bit about customer service and white glove service and all about, obviously, um, he works across um, luxury yachts and that business in terms of providing like customer service, um, but also is the owner of a whole range of restaurants as well. So in terms of, of um, the service industry, he's, he's very knowledgeable on that. He's going to be joining us on the 5th of August to talk all about that and his experiences. And, you know, I think also it's just super interesting to live a life in business and then to end up on television as well. Uh, must just be a, a kind of crazy dynamic that he's gone through and all of those changes. So looking forward to chatting with him on the 5th of August. Um, that's all we have time for here today. But if you do have any questions, of course, you can get in touch with us. Just leave um, your comments in the chat box. We, of course, have a lot of people who view this post live. Um, so don't hesitate in getting in touch with us. We love to get your questions. We have a whole team at our role and next role who can answer any of your questions. And um, Caitlin as well, as she said, happy to get involved in conversations and answer any questions that you may have. We uh, have a ton of resources on adroll.com forward slash resources. So that's webinars, eBooks, um, as well as blog posts and everything else in terms of some educational um, info that you may need for your marketing campaign. So do check that out there. Thank you again for watching and thank you to Caitlin from Neurex for joining us for today's live stream.